Welcome to Writing for Big Band with the Kiowa Thig Dance Party, the series where we take a deeper look at the techniques that make big band music great and show you how we use them in the dance party. Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about saxophones and in particular I want to highlight a voicing that I love to use in saxophones. Pretty much every big band writer uses it a lot and it's a great way to get different colors with your voicings without having to do too much extra work and they're called drop voicings. Using the term drop is a way to describe a voicing where the notes are not necessarily within the span of an octave and so you have to figure out how did you get that sound and you can use numbers to help easily describe what the sound is and the mathematics behind getting that sound. So let's get into it. What I'm going to show you is how to make a drop two voicing. That's the most popular one. And basically what happens is you have your melody note, for example, a D. And then if you make a closed voicing where all the notes are in the span of an octave, something like that, that would be a closed voicing. Now to make a drop voicing, you simply drop one of the notes down an octave. For example, that B or this A. You could even drop multiple notes like the B and the F sharp. These are all drop voicings. And you call it um, a certain number drop voicing based on what note you dropped. The melody is one and then each note below it gets its own number. So you have one, two, three, and four. So to make a drop two voicing, you just take the second note from the top, drop it down an octave, and that's drop two. To make drop three, take the third note from the top and drop it down an octave. I would say those are two of the most common drop voicings that get used. But another one that's really nice is drop two, drop three, where you drop both the second and third note from the top. And it looks like that. And the cool thing with any drop voicing pretty much is you have different kinds of spaces between the notes. Here's only a third, you got a fourth here and a fifth here. Whereas with your closed voicing, you're kind of all seconds and thirds. No matter what the drop voicing you do, you get all sorts of different kinds of intervals, a sixth, a fourth, a third, or if you do drop two, drop three, you have a cluster down here of a second and then a fifth and a sixth. So these voicings give a lot of really beautiful color, especially when you have instruments that thrive in different registers. And the saxophone section is a perfect example of that. Duke Ellington uses drop voicings masterfully in, well, every song he writes, but especially this sax soli on Such Sweet Thunder. I have it written out here on the piano, and you can see that other than these first two voicings and the last voicing, everything here is a drop two voicing, where the second note from the top was brought down an octave, and so the span of the voicing is more than an octave. And you've got the berry and the tenor on those nice low notes, but the altos are still singing up high, and it gives a really nice sound. So here's Duke Ellington's Such Sweet Thunder, the beginning of the sax solely. <laughs> So not only does he use weird sounding chords with those drop voicings, and then he goes back to a regular sounding chord for the end, but the end was a closed voicing, so it gave a completely different sound. So I use drop voicings a lot, and a sax soli that I want to show you is from a song I uh, arranged called Mr. Sandman. As you can see with the piano reduction, these are all closed position voicings where the melody, C here, is C down here. E flat here is E flat here. And it's that way for the whole soli pretty much, except for the end right here, these last two bars, you've got this C was dropped down an octave to make it a drop two voicing. And then here you had C flat and D, the two and three were dropped an octave. The same thing happens here with B flat and C. It would have been up here, but to make drop two, drop three, you get that sound. And so if I did closed voicings here, it would have sounded like this. Like this. 
which is very nice, but you can take those drop voicings and it sounds like this. Get a nice big spread there. So what we're gonna do now is play for you the end of the soli on Mr. Sandman. So that's a little introduction to drop voicings and you hear how great they sound when you put them in the saxophones. So I encourage you guys to try them out on your next arrangement.